Thank you. Good afternoon. And thank you to Giorgio also for inviting me in Prague. So every day we apply uh, an algorithm in our clinical practice and the medical algorithm is uh, used just to uh, reduce the, pos the potential errors in, in, in our determination of predictive factors. But and this is, for example, an, an example of, uh, of an algorithm. Uh, it's correct. Uh, it's uh, an algorithm recently proposed by uh, Lynette Scholl uh, for ag testing. But it's correct, but could be applied in, in some labs, but not in, in other labs, because we, have, we use differently the, the biomarkers, uh, even simultaneously tested or step by step. So this is just an example. But we have to remember first that uh, the about half of cases of nosmo cell lung cancer are null uh, uh, without uh, uh, a driver mutation. So basically, uh, the first problem is to define the histotype in these cases particularly. So because uh, as uh, previously uh, underlined by, by John, uh, the histology uh, still matter uh, uh, in some way, particularly if you choose uh, uh, some platinum-based uh, chemotherapy with bevacizumab or, or pemetrexid. And these tumors may, may look quite similar on morphology sometimes on, on small biopsy. For example, it's very difficult on morphology at naked eye to recognize if this is a small cell lung cancer or an adenocarcinoma or a, or a squamous cell lung cancer. In this case, as previously mentioned, we have to use immunohistochemistry to discriminate these three main histotypes. So the first one is squamous cell lung cancer because it's stained with P63 or P40, and is negative for the other markers. And other carcinoma, you know that is positive for TTF1 and napsin, and negative, for example, for chromogranin, that is the most specific neuroendocrine markers in our hands, and P63. And the, 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 the third case is a small cell lung cancer with positivity for TTF1, patchy, and chromogranin, but negative for napsin and P63. So the first uh, point is to fix the histotype of the uh, lung cancer we are analyzing. So there are also other uh, biomarkers that we can use in immunostains in routine practice and that you know basically from the, the diagnostic report. But the main, uh, the, the, main the, the, the most important one are TTF1 and P40 for specificity and, uh, and sensitivity. We, we summarize uh, the, the differential diagnosis uh, uh, in routine practice between adenosquamous and small cell lung cancer in this paper. And we, if you use TTF1 and P63 or TTF1 uh, and P40, it's important to have uh, clearly some rules to apply in this exercise because it's not, uh, it's not easy every, every time to define the, the histotype using this uh, uh, combination of uh, immunomarkers. So the first step is to fix histotype, and we are here. Uh, if you follow this uh, great paper from the Spanish group uh, from uh, Condi. And the second point for the pathologist is to define the biomarkers, particularly the biomarkers with the, uh, there are predictive for uh, some uh, draggable uh, driver. But we have to know that uh, the, the, the type of algorithm that we can choose mainly depend on the availability of the drugs on the line of treatment approval in, this, in uh, different countries because uh, we have different uh, lines of treatment in different countries, even in Europe and the USA, for example, and different uh, national health system rules and the type of tumor tissue and the methods we, we want to apply in our lab, or we have in our lab. So I, I show you some examples. So based on the methods, for example, if we use a, a ALK determination, we can use FISH, or ROS1, for example, FISH, immunohistochemistry, and RT-PCR. In this case, uh, the biopsy is much more performant than cytology, particularly smear cytology. If you use smear cytology, uh, it's, it's dramatic, the situation with FISH and, and immunohistochemistry. If you test for a mutation, AGFR, KRAS, or other, cytology may be uh, better than biopsy because it's not fixed with formalin. There are sole alcohol fixed, and it could be helpful to, to determine that this kind of treatment of these uh, determinations. And PDL1, we know that it is 
to chemistry, at least at, at, one, at now, and we have different clone, different system, different uh, uh, platform, and the biopsy is uh, for sure much better than the cytology, particularly smeared cytology. And this is an example. But the test could be also surface sensitivity, have a different sensitivity, for example, to detect AGFR mutation in non-small cell lung cancer. We know that there are common mutations, but also uncommon mutations that respond to AGFR TKI, and we have different sensitivity uh, based on the different techniques we use in our lab. So it's important uh, the relationship between the biologist and the pathologist to determine the right uh, to, uh, tumor tissue to, uh, uh, in, in which to perform uh, the, 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 the determination, the PCR uh, determination. And this is an example presented uh, last year in, in Denver. And if you use an NGS, for example, in determining uh, AGFR mutation or rather a ALK uh, rearrangement, uh, you, you can lose some cases if you don't use the right tissue with the right uh, uh, methods uh, uh, in your labs. So it's very important to clearly fix uh, the tumor tissue and the methods we have in our lab. For ALK, FISH is uh, the gold standard. We know uh, uh, that uh, we have to use a break apart uh, probe to determine if there is an inversion or a deletion. But now we have the, the immunistochemist that's quite performant uh, uh, to detect uh, ALK positivity and we can use different clones. The, the D5F3 from Ventana Kid is very performant. It's positive, negative, no score. Uh, but if you use a D5F3 uh, from cell signaling technology or 5A4 or ALK1 or 1A4, you have to use a, a scoring system because you have different intensity uh, of expression in, in the tumor. What we know, it's very important, this paper from uh, previously presented by Eric from the HETOP group, because we, do, we know that now that ALK positivity uh, is clearly uh, and significantly related to fish uh, positivity for ALK, but it's much more important than negativity. So we know now that ALK negativity with immunostochemistry is almost negative uh, all the time, also with fish tests. So we, it's a, a, a robust tool to use immunostochemistry to determine ALK uh, in our clinical practice. And this is supported by the, the comparison with the fish and the immunostochemistry discrepant results using NGS, for example. And NGS uh, confirmed the immunostochemistry result and not always the fish results. So uh, probably immunostochemistry, is, if correctly used, is uh, much performant than, uh, than fish analysis. And is the same for ROS1, but ROS1 is very similar to ALK, but we have a, a, a little problem with immunostochemistry because the, the sensitivity is uh, not very good, and we have a, 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 an expression, an aberrant expression in hyperplastic pneumocytes or in macrophages. So uh, sometimes in, the, in a small biopsy, it's very difficult to determine ROS1 positivity uh, with immunostochemistry. Even if uh, there are papers comparing both the techniques and the results are quite good. Even this an example, a recent example from the Grenoble group, uh, determining a good sensitivity and specificity when compared the immunostochemistry and fish analysis for uh, detecting ALK rearrangement in non-small cell lung cancer. And tumor material may also influence the methods in determining the predictive factors. As I said before, smear cytology is not a, a good cytology to use to determine uh, uh, the predictive factors. I prefer to use cell block, the biopsy, resection, clearly, and uh, even from primary or metastatic sites. And now we have liquid biopsy, particularly if uh, we have to follow the, 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 uh, the, the TKI uh, resistant uh, in, in, a, in a specific subset of, of patients with nosmos cell lung cancer. It's important to know also that uh, the different methods may uh, give different results uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, feasibility of uh, some techniques. For example, if you use a cell block or a transbronchial biopsy, you have different uh, diagnostic yield, but also the results from for, uh, uh, predictive markers may change uh, quite, uh, quite a little. So it's important to use a block, as I said before, and even confirmed by John uh, and, and Eric uh, this morning. 
Uh, it's very easy to, to, to perform a cell block, even in this, uh, uh, in this paper, uh, to use it formally in fixation of, uh, of cytology. And this is a good guide uh, to, to, to know these tricks uh, for the pathologists and, biolog and biologists too, uh, recently appearing in thorax from a, a European group. This is a, a, a small experience just to, 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 to uh, robustly confirming what I'm saying. And uh, in, in this paper, they have just, uh, the, the authors have just one slide, and he determined to, to, to use uh, ALK fish or even ALK immunohistochemistry to determine first ALK uh, 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 rearrangement and then AGFR mutation because in this way, in, with using this step, they may determine with the same slide a ALK rearrangement and AGFR mutation. So we have also to, to become much more smarter than before to determine at, uh, these predictive factors. And in firm, the, the key message is to use, uh, to optimize the use of, uh, of the small uh, tissue we have to determine these predictive markers. I prefer immunohistochemistry for ALK, particularly in uh, small amounts of cancer cells, like in this case of, of, of for example, cell block. We have just a, a, a small uh, cluster of uh, neoplastic cells, and this is perfect for immunohistochemistry, not perfect, for example, for fish analysis. But if I have just a cytologic smears, I prefer to use a fish rather than uh, immunohistochemistry. So it depends on the tumor tissue you have, uh, the choice, the right choice of the techniques you have to use. And even uh, in, the, in the routine algorithm, the national Ill it systems uh, determine some differences in the methods uh, we have to determine these biomarkers. For example, if you, use, uh, if you have to determine ALK uh, testing uh, in the USA, we have uh, the approval for fish analysis and immunohistochemistry using just one uh, uh, clone and one, uh, one uh, companion diagnostic, the D5F3 from Ventana Roche, but we can use RT-PCR, for example. But if we are in Europe, we, we can use fish and immunohistochemistry, but not RT-PCR. And if I, I'm in Japan, I can use fish, immunohistochemistry, or RT-PCR. So the algorithm may change based on we are uh, in the country we, 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 we live, for example, or even in the first line approval or second line approval. If I'm in Italy, for example, and I'm in Italy, in first line, uh, chrysotim is not approval at the moment. So I can use uh, uh, this, I, I, I have to use these data, these rules, to determine my best algorithm in routine practice. This is an example, for, uh, an example from, for, uh, from Italy uh, uh, experience. So to determine simultaneously AGFR mutation, KRAS mutation, and ALK testing in this uh, first uh, 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 simultaneously when we have a nosmo cell lung cancer with a non-squamous uh, phenotype. And these are the rules in Italy, for example. Uh, it's very, not very uh, easy to, 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 to read, but basically we have positive, negative. If I have the platform uh, with the D5F3 uh, kit Ventana, but if I have to use uh, ALK1 5A4 or 1A4 in my lab, because I have no uh, the platform Ventana, I have to use the scoring system. So in this case, one plus or two plus should uh, require the, the fish uh, determination to, to fix the positivity or the negative of the test. And in Spain, they, they, they use mainly fish, for example, not immunohistochemistry. So simultaneously test AGFR, ALK, and ROS1 without KRAS mutation, for example. Why KRAS mutation? In my hands, in my lab, I prefer to use, uh, to, to apply also KRAS mutation in, in the algorithm we use in clinical pathway. I know that there are no drugs against KRAS, but KRAS is about one third of, my, of the patient in, uh, in Europe and in my country. So it's very important to determine, uh, to, to select the patient for further uh, studies or not, for example. And, they require not a lot of uh, DNA because uh, we have just one exon to determine. And basically, we have the multiplex uh, uh, machine now, and they determine uh, simultaneously KRAS and several other AGFR, AR2, BRAF uh, in, 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 the same, in the same run. So basically, now we have KRAS mutation by default. 
Another important point is to uh, test uh, uh, at reflex test uh, the, the determination of predictive matter. The, this uh, uh, increase the successful of, uh, of the technique and uh, the time is, uh, is reduced, the time of these results is uh, significantly re reduced uh, as shown in this uh, great experience uh, uh, presented last year in, in Denver, for example. So it's quite very important to know that the patient that has a non-small cell lung cancer with non-squamous histotype is an advanced lung, uh, cancer, is an advanced stage, and I determine as pathologist uh, the AGFR mutation, ALK, and other tests uh, at reflex, as a, a reflex test, and this is the same. So now we have to put all together uh, simultaneously, uh, when we determine uh, the histotype, we have also to determine all the tests we have, uh, uh, just also to preserve the tumor tissue we have. Because you can see in this picture, uh, we have a lot of biomarkers in lung cancer, but a small amount of tissue. And in the, in the other settings, oncologic settings, there are a lot of tissue and no biomarkers. That's the great uh, uh, difference between lung cancer and non-lung cancer now. And now, fortunately, we have the new technologies as showed before by Professor Roman Thomas and uh, the NGS for, uh, particularly for, for uh, mutations, but now also this kit, for example, Oncomine for rearrangement, they perform quite well on the same tube, uh, DNA examination and RNA d d examination with several rearrangements like, uh, like this one. So probably the next future algorithm is this one. So we have to, once establish that the patient has a non-small cell lung cancer uh, with a non-squamous histotype, we can determine the, the several mutations with an NGS and several rearrangement with an RNA kit uh, in the same time and in less than seven working days uh, for all the, our patients. Another problem we have is PDL1. It's, it's a problem because, uh, because we have uh, several clones, several scoring systems, several platforms. It's very confusing data, to me at least. And I really don't know if, uh, if it's necessary to test uh, PDL1 in this moment because we have no fixed rules, at least in, in, our, in our country. There is just one companion diagnostic approved in, uh, from the Food and Drug Administration with Pembro, is a DACO clone 22C3, but we have another clone from DACO, is a 28 uh, slash eight, and uh, this clone seems to not give uh, useful information, so it's, it's very difficult to, to apply uh, PDR1 immunostains in our uh, routine practice algorithm. So my last slide is this one. Probably it's important to simultaneously test at least AGFR mutation, KRAS mutation, ALK. Uh, I don't know how to put PDL one in this moment, and in negative cases to, to test uh, ROS1, that is uh, the first with the, the new uh, um, uh, uh, the availability of crizotin to, to determine the, the to, to, to treat the patient with ROS1 positivity. And it's important to fix at the, at the, at the beginning the histotype because it's, uh, it's useful to use uh, uh, to this kind of algorithm in adenocarcinoma and non squamous, uh, non small cell lung cancer, not other, other, otherwise specified. And in squamous cell lung cancer, just if the patient is a young patient or non smoker. Thank you for your attention.